Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on parameters. Okay, to be more specific, S parameters. This video, I'm going to show you to you how can we actually represent normalized incident. Okay, so for S parameters, incident is actually represented by the term A. Okay, I'm not sure whether you're still able to recall the earlier on discussion. Okay, and we also have the refactored component. Again, for S parameters, refactored is actually represented by the term B. So this video, I'm going to show you to you how can we actually represent normalized incidence and refactored component with terminate voltage and current. Okay, so this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part five series discussion on S parameters. So guys, if you're keen to know more about parameters, for example, Z parameters, Y parameters, A, B, C, D parameters, and also S parameter, okay, you can always look at the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on parameters. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, I strongly urge you guys to send me the question through the comment. Okay, so this is because I hardly check this email. So guys, if you want to have a faster response, okay, please ask me through the comment. I also strongly urge you guys okay, to help me to improve the quality of this channel. Give me some comment or maybe suggest some topics that you guys are keen okay, so that I can have more view on this channel. Okay, before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Next, we need to quickly come to this one port network. Okay, so this diagram show the one port network. Okay, the instantaneous port terminate voltage and current. Okay, so basically this will be the terminate voltage. This will be the terminate current. Okay, as you can see from this equation here, they are actually all related to the incidence and refractive voltage and current component by the following relationship. Okay, so this we have discussed early on. Okay, but I just want to make this discussion complete. Okay, so this is the voltage here. So the amount of voltage is simply okay, the voltage at the incident wave plus the voltage at the refracted wave. As you can see from here, okay, from here, I actually can calculate my terminate voltage, simply the submission of incident wave plus refracted wave in terms of voltage. Next, in terms of current, okay, as you can see that the current actually flow at different direction. So hence, the I1 terminate current will be I incident minus I reference. Okay, so basically, as I mentioned, this equation we have discussed early on. Okay, so next, okay, if I consider the case of a transmission line system, okay, so imagine this is a transmission line system. Basically, they will have a real characteristic impedance. Any transmission line, let's say we have this characteristic impedance of R0. Okay, then the incident and refracted component are related to this characteristic impedance as following. Okay, so this is nothing new. So basically, V over I is equals to R. Okay, so basically, this is a Kirchhoff current law. Okay, so basically, from here, you can see that V okay, of the incident wave over the I of the incident wave, I will actually obtain the characteristic impedance. And the V of refracted wave versus the I of refracted wave, again, I will be able to obtain the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Okay, so I will need these three equations on my next slide. Okay, so next, okay, so these are the three equations that were previously discussed. So these are the three equations. Okay, I just put it here in order to make the discussion complete. Okay, so basically for this part here, okay, I want to actually describe the incident and refracted voltage and current in terms of V1 and I1. Okay, so basically you can see that this is the voltage of the incident wave. Okay, so I need to describe them in terms of V1 and I1 only. Okay, so for this case here, if you take a look on this equation here, if I want to have the incident voltage, I need to shift my refracted so-called voltage on the other side. So it becomes V1 minus V reference. Okay, so basically this V reference again, 
Okay, if you look at this equation here, you can see that it's simply so-called I reference multiplied by R naught, as you can see from here. So basically, this is basically continue here. So next, okay, I want to find my I reference. So this I reference is here. So if this is minus, so therefore I want to so-called express in terms of minus I refracted, and I just need to shift this incident wave to the left. So it become I1 minus the incidence current. And basically this will be the next step. So once I get this again, I will be able to find what will be my incident current. Okay, as you can see from here, the incident current will be simply so-called the voltage incidence okay, divided by my R0, which is since over here. So next with this, I actually can simplify the equation. Okay, so what I need to do is I multiply R0 here. I multiply R0, this cancel each other, and therefore I have this equation here. Okay, over here, okay, I have the voltage of incident wave, and there's another voltage of incident wave. So I shift this to the left. So this become two, two V incident wave, and everything still intact over here. I just shift this V incidence to the left. So over here, if I want to find this V incidence, I just need to do a divide by two. So over here, you can see that I actually express the incidence okay, of the voltage in terms of V1 and I1. Okay, so basically, I have successfully expressed this first term here, which is the incident voltage. So next, okay, I will be able to do my so-called reference uh, the refracted wave or so, sorry. Okay, so basically this is the equation that I found earlier on. Okay, and from here you can see that if I want to find my refracted wave, what I need to do is I bring my incident wave to the left. Okay, so therefore it becomes V1 minus V of the incident wave. Okay, so this step I have found earlier on, if you still remember. So I just substitute this thing over here. Okay, and then I can see that it's V1 minus half V1, so it becomes positive half V1 and everything still the, remain the same. So therefore, from here, I have also successfully find the refractive voltage okay, in the expression of terminate voltage and also terminate current, as you can see from here. Okay, so again, okay, it will be much more easier okay, for the incident current. Okay, so for incident current is simply by this formula, as you can see from here. Okay, so this is the incidence current here. So if I want to find this term here, will be this voltage of the incidence over the R0, as you can see from here. Again, I have managed to find my so-called voltage at the incident wave over here. So basically, all these things divided by R0, I actually have also successfully okay, find the incident current okay, in terms of terminate voltage V1 and also I1. Okay, so next on the refracted current. Okay, so again, for the refracted current, you can see that it will be V refracted over R0, which is mentioned here. And again, I have managed to find my so-called V of the refracted wave over here. So what I need to do is I just divide them by R0. And basically, again, from here, you can see that I actually successfully express my refracted current with the terminate voltage and also terminate current. So with this, okay, I need to do another steps here. And before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. Okay, if more of you guys actually help by like this video, okay, so this video will be able to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me. Okay, please press the like button now. If you have learned something from this video, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Okay, so let's continue again on this discussion. Okay, so these are the four sets of formula. Okay, so basically what I have discussed Early on, so these are the so-called uh, four sets of formula. This is one. Okay, so this is two, this is three, and this is four. Okay, I just put everything all into one page, as you can see from here. Okay, so this pair of equation, okay, they are actually all sufficient to fully describe the one port network, which is shown over here. Okay, but this may be replaced by a single pair of equation. Okay, if we introduce the concept of normalized current and voltage variables. Okay, from this equation here, okay, let us define two new normalized variables, A and B. Okay, so basically, I mentioned earlier on, A will be represented by the incident, B will be represented by the refracted. And if we do this, 
normalized variable. So basically, you can see from here. Okay, so this is the A term here. So basically, I can normalize the voltage okay, at the incident wave. I can also normalize the current at the incident wave. Same way for the voltage at the refracted and also the current at the refracted. And basically, you can see that I actually represent them in terms of A and B. So next, Okay, so since I have this term here, okay, so I, earlier on, I actually have successfully find this term. So basically, uh, this term here is basically, I just use this term, okay, just to be very clear. So incidence current multiplied by square root R0, okay, so basically it's over here. So I have also successfully found this term, if you still remember, okay, the current of incidence, okay, which is over here. Okay, so all these things here, I just put into this equation. Okay, I need to multiply by square root R0. Okay, so basically this thing multiply over here. So therefore this become square root here. I guess you understand what I want to say. So from here you can see that I successfully so-called define this incident wave okay, with respect to terminate voltage and also current. Same wise for the B term here. Okay, so for this B term, okay, since B is on refracted, okay, if not, you can always go to the previous slides here. Okay, you can see that this will be the B term. Okay, so basically this is the equation. And this I refracted, you can also easily find this I refracted from this equation here. Okay, so therefore I have my I refracted equation also. Okay, so basically it will be here. So they multiply by this R0 here. So again, this R0 square root multiplied by this R0. So basically this will be in this equation here. Okay, the discussion so far has been just based on the case of a real reference, okay, which is R0. Okay, we can also easily extend the definition of the variable A and B okay, by consider the case of a complex reference impedance Z0 here. So basically, besides being real, basically we can also do this complex reference impedance. Okay, and therefore the variables, okay, we need to rename them as a power wave and redefine them as following here. So you can see that the equation is the same. Okay, what now is basically we just need to have the real term of Z0. Okay, I probably have not typed this correct. So basically it's a real term of Z0. Same over here will be the real term of Z0. Okay, so if then, okay, if you still remember for S will be simply A over B. So basically with this, okay, I like to end my discussion. Okay, in this discussion, you can see that I have successfully so-called show that the incidence wave is actually represented by terminate voltage and also terminate current. Same for this case here. Okay, the refracted wave is actually represented by the terminate voltage and also the terminate current. Okay, so with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, 